Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And we are here to make sure you are ready. Welcome to Ultimate Health Mind and Body Recreative Ministry. This is our Wednesday Bible study. I'm Bishop Garnett Henderson. And I'm Donnie Henderson. Assistant Pastor and First Lady. All right. And we, uh, the in this series, What Must I Do to Be Saved? This is part two of that series. Amen. We recap, just to give you a recap, um, What Must I Do to Be Saved? This is part two. Um, but just to let you know what part one was, and you can go back and, and, and view part one. It's it's up. Um, recap is, it was Matthew, third chapter, and the second verse was about, and saying um, that first you must repent. Number one, part one series was, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we're going to continue on into part two. Amen. And part two? Part two is... We're talking about baptism, being baptized, right? So uh, if you are not aware of it, uh, what must I do to be saved? This is part two. Part one was last Wednesday, and it is going to be a three-part series because there's three steps that you need to have in order to be saved. And so we're on step number two, and that is baptism. Amen. And Bishop, as you say, um, what must I do to be saved? Saved from what? Saved from eternal damnation. Uh, As I teach our congregation and uh, the ones at at our church is that this life that you are living right now is only meant to determine where you will spend your eternity which is your real life. Eternity, compared to this life, virtually goes to nothing. This life virtually goes to zero when it's compared to eternity, except this life will determine where you will spend your eternal life. Amen, that's right. And you do not, I don't care how many friends you got going to hell, you don't want to be there. You understand? Because it's not going to be like you're having a picnic in hell. No friends you know? in hell. No ice cream is going to last in hell. It's going to all be melt. It won't be anything, any ice cream. There won't be any joyfulness. So uh, no we pleasure. always hear people no saying, pleasure. well, you know, all my friends at least will be there. It ain't like you're going to be enjoying them. You know what I mean? They're going to be crying just like you're going to be crying. No friends. There's no friends in hell. There are no friends in hell. There's uh, no yeah. friends in hell. There's nothing pleasurable about hell at all. So there's just no friends. Right. They just don't realize people say stuff like that. But they're living, they're talking about this life. But the eternal life is no comparison. Whether it's Amen. heaven or you choose hell. Right. It's no comparison to this life. There is no friends in hell. Not going to be any comfort in hell. That's for certain. Amen. That is for certain. So, baptism, it, it is a necessary uh, part of being saved because, first of all, you know, the Word of God tells us that we need to do it. So, uh, yes, it it's does. necessary just from that standpoint alone. It's, it's necessary. It's a necessary step uh, in what we have to do. But you, But there are... You know, to get somebody to try to understand the significance of it, we're going to try to get you to understand that. We're going to talk to you about uh, about Jesus and, and his walk with baptism. We're going to tell you uh, why you have to be baptized. We're going to tell you the method in which you need to be baptized. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to tell you, you know, so we're going to be covering them kind of uh, uh, basis today. So want you to stick around and, and, and encourage someone else to tune in because uh, this is going to be very, uh, uh, very it's informative. Intense. Yes, it's intense. Uh, as we said, first of all, Acts 2 and 38 uh, is where Peter, St. Peter, tells us what we must do to be saved. When he says, then Peter said unto him, Acts 2 and 38, repent. We covered that uh, last Wednesday. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's right. And see, it seemed like if you look at it, 
the baptism sets you up for the Holy Ghost, although it has been recorded in the Bible where some has received the Holy Ghost before the baptism, but guess what it told them? Should they for uh, should they forgo water? They were asking the question, well, should they forgo water? And they baptized them anyway because they felt it was something necessary. It was still a necessary component. Even though they received that Holy Ghost, they still got baptized anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can find that in Acts 10 if you wanted to read further about that and get further knowledge on that. Um, so uh, the First Lady covered Acts 2 and 38. And we're talked about repent. Yes, amen. We're talked about repent, baptize, and Holy Ghost. Those were the three phases. Those were the three components that, you know, that are involved in being saved. You must repent, then be baptized, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So when you receive a gift, you don't really work at that. And we'll continue on with with uh, receiving the Holy Ghost next Wednesday with our next Bible study. All right, so I want to go in and talk about, uh, I'm going to give you the scripture, and if you would happen to need to pause the video while you go and get the scriptures, uh, get the uh, find your location in the Bible, that's okay, that's completely okay, just restart it, but we're going to be reading right now in John, St. John, uh, the ninth chapter and the 31st verse. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. So that means when you're praying, where are your prayers going to? He, de he doesn't hear a sinner. He doesn't hear a sinner. It says, we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God, got to be a worshiper of God, and not only just a worshiper, because some people say, oh, you know, like, hallelujah, don't go to church and no praise. But that's about it. That's, a, you know, that's where it stops at. But it got to go further than that. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, yeah. and doeth his will, him he heareth. Right? So now we're talking about baptism. And as the first lady mentioned, he said, she said that Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ yeah. for the remission of sin. So that means the sin has been removed from the sinner. So when yeah. sin's removed, you're no longer a sinner. So now you're in line for God to, to deal with you and to work with you, all right, for you to talk with God and have a relationship with God because you're no longer considered a sinner because your sins were removed through baptism. So yeah. we have to, so this is why it's so important to be baptized because if you don't get baptized, then you're still considered a sinner. Baptism removes the sin. All right. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. And then after that, we get into Matthew, the 13th, the third chapter, the 13th through the 17th verses. And um, some individuals, you know, I don't need to be baptized. Jesus was our perfect example. And so here he is coming upon John the Baptist. And he's, just to give you a scenario, and he's asking him to baptize him. Uh, Jesus uh, wanted us to know what we need to do. It says, Matthew three thirteen and 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, <laughs> I have need to be baptized of thee. He's like, you're Jesus. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Hmm, that means his head just didn't get sprinkled. He was immersed mm. in the water and came out of the water. Went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, this is amazing. It's immaculate that Jesus loved us so much that he, John was like, You're Jesus Christ. I how can I baptize you? You're the great one. 
And Jesus said, "Suffer to be so." Yeah, that would be he awkward. He said, "I want to, I want to, <laughs> yeah, I want to." And, and and they were cousins in the first mm-hmm. place. They were, you know, John the Baptist and Jesus were cousins, and John was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. So he was born first to tell people about his cousin Jesus Christ, who was, you know, the Son of the Living God. Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, so he's like, you know, how can I baptize you, Jesus? And he said, you know, suffer to be so. Do it anyway. He said because. It becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And, and so um, some might, you know, have a question and some might say, oh, I was baptized when I was a baby, when I was first born at the christenings and things like that. That is unacceptable. A baby does not know to even repent to get baptized. You must be aware that you're repenting and what you are being baptized for. You're being baptized, you know, like Jesus' example said to you know to do so it's for amen the all righteousness right. must be fulfilled so we repent and then we must be baptized and that makes so much that makes i mean that it seemed like it's completely out of place baptizing children and baptizing people who aren't aware of Definitely. what you're doing i mean even even certain things that we do as a country here in america you you know you have to be a certain age to even vote because you got to know what you're doing, right? Amen. And how can you Amen. get into a place where you're telling someone uh, when you're baptizing someone and they have no idea what it's about? We told you there's a step process. You got to repent and be baptized. That that's got to be a conscious decision that the individual have to make. It has to be a, a conscious decision that they are willing to take on. They're becoming. They want to become a believer. Now, if you want to do something for children, which we do at our church, and um, and uh, my pastor, who is uh, the late David C. Robertson, uh, senior. senior had did was we do we do de- we dedicate babies to where now the dedication is more for the parent asking the parent or do you promise to bring this child up in the church and raise them accordingly? Now that's in place. That that's proper yeah. but to baptize a child what, what's the significance of that it just wets wets the head what's the significance yeah, yeah it, there's no significance yeah, yeah. In it. so you know that's important so keep that in mind you know some of you may have been baptized that way um but um there's really no significance in that um we're gonna go ahead we're gonna pick it up at john saint john three, john three. uh Verses 1 through 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Let you understand, the Pharisees was a certain, they were religious rulers back in that day. Right? So there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, however you want to, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus wasn't quite sure about what he meant by that, so he had followed up with another question. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Now, what I want you to understand about this, that, you know, you cannot go to heaven except that happens, right? And people throw that around loosely. Oh, they're in heaven now. Oh, you know, they're in heaven, right? They throw that around loosely. They just think because people think because people die, they automatically go to heaven or because they consider them a good person. Because that person considered whoever died a good person, they made it to heaven. But there are certain ways, certain things that we have to do Amen. in order for that to happen. Yes. right? And I also want you to understand that there is a, 
It's a two part of being two part. There's a two birthing process. One is being born of the water. That's the baptism that we're talking about right now. The other part we're going to talk about uh, next Wednesday, that's the uh, that's being born of the spirit. But we're talking about being born of the water right now. So there's a two birthing process to this. And we can't we can't do one. We have to do both. Mm -hmm. Right. And as I told you before, whenever it went out of order in the uh, in the acts, whenever they received the Holy Ghost, but they didn't they weren't baptized. They still baptized them anyway, yes. because it is a part of what needs to be done. Yes. And so did it say it's a part that needs to be done. Um, and so when we say that there is uh, something I'd like to. Um, you know, explain to you is that, you know, everyone has an opinion. You know, people have an opinion about being baptized. People have an opinion about um, what, a baby being baptized and, and uh, everybody's in heaven when they die. Some really, really bad people like murderers. But um, there's man's opinion. And then there's God's eternal truth. We're not talking about man's opinion, not even our own opinions. But we're talking about God's eternal truth. We are presenting to you the Amen. Word of God, biblically based, foundation, solid in it. That's why we give you the scriptures where you can go and check out what we are saying. We're biblically based and we're going by Bible, the Word of God. Luke 7 and 29, And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. Now, as we can see, you know, those that rejected being baptized and didn't want to get baptized and, uh, you know, just maybe sprinkling instead of immersed in water, your whole body in water and come out straightway like Jesus did. They rejected the counsel of God against their own selves. So when you reject baptism, you reject God against your own self. And if God be against you, who can be for you? So, you know, you want to make sure that you line up with biblically based Bible and immerse. Get a man of God, a preacher, uh, such as Bishop, our bishop right here, uh, and let him immerse you and baptize you in the name of Jesus to uh, get rid of right. all the sin that you were born in. And then, you know, a gift is given. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's so important to uh, make sure you do it the way that the God, the way God has uh, designed it to be. So, yes. don't try yes. to put your own thoughts, your own way that you think. See, that's what people do now. They try to put their own okay. opinion into it yes. and their own, you know, because it makes sense to them. They think that well, it makes sense to God that God would do it that way. But no. God's ways are high above our high ways. Above His our thoughts ways. are above our yeah, thoughts. So you, we have to do it God's way. And we might we not understand. Do oh, I don't understand. Of course we don't understand everything that God does. We only understand what he lets our little mealing brains compared to his um, lets us understand. And the word scripture also says just don't even lean to your own understanding. Just acknowledge God. And in all ways, and he will direct thy path. And it's just a faith walk. And so when you're told what to do to be baptized and how to be saved, saved from eternal damnation, just trust God. Don't trust man. Trust God that it's that way. And he will keep leading you. You'll feel his spirit, and he will lead you, and he will guide you. And you will make heaven Amen. if you trust in God and have faith. Amen to that. That is so important to realize. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't do it your way. Do it God's way. I Amen. mean that that is so important Amen. to understand that. Don't don't do it your way. You know, deny your way. Your way. You know, because matter of fact, you know, says Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And say the will of whoever yeah. it is that their will to be done. So you got to line your will up. You know, your will got to be lined up with the will of God. Amen. You know what I mean? Whenever you're not lined up, you know what I mean? If anybody's going to come into alignment, it's not God coming coming in alignment with yes. you. Amen. It's you coming in alignment, alignment with, with God. God. 
You know, you got to understand that. He's the creator. Right? So we're going to turn now to Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 7. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So now I want you to understand, I'm going to pause there briefly. Amen. In the in St. John's chapter 3, it was talking about being born of the water. Now it's talking about going in the water is being, uh, being a part of death now, being buried with him into his death. So water is it's a two-part process. It is, yeah, it is a yeah. dying process. And it is a rebirth process. So when you get submerged into that water you go down. and you go down in that water, you're being buried. Just like whenever somebody dies and they throw all that dirt on them, they're buried. But then when you come out of that water, you're reborn you of the water. Amen. You you're reborn you. of the water. It's such a good analogy, right? Bishop, that people need to yeah. understand. It's terrific. Is that when you go down, you buried and you go into death. Death of what? death of your sins mm -hmm. your gone. sins are all gone when you come back up you have a new life that's why you, you could be heard down. no no more sin is on you that's when you go down yeah. in baptism and you come back up you're free from all sin and it's up to you to stay that way you have to stay out of sin then. and and that's why you could be heard said they said not because saint john's chapter 9 and 31 against it now we know that god heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his Amen. will, him he heareth. Yes, he hear. So now when you go down in that water and you and, and all them sins is removed That's from you, true. you're dead to sin. Yes. You have no more sins on you. You're coming up pure now. Right. And see, that's what God, God want purity. That's why no sin can enter into heaven even. Sin can't make no it to way, heaven, no way. right? So now when you come out of that water, you're pure, and you can be heard now. Thank you, Jesus. You can be heard. We thank the Lord. So let's go ahead and continue on. So it says, So therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk, not in our old ways, not in our old sinful ways, but listen to what it says. Even so, we also should walk in newness, newness of life. So when you come out of that water, you're supposed to walk differently. You're supposed to walk in a newness of life. You don't have them heavy burdens of sin on you. That means you don't have to carry that guilt of what you might have done in the past. That's gone. You don't have to say, oh, man, I'm so guilty. I'm no good. You know what I mean? I did these things and feel guilty about them. They're gone. They're washed away from you. Yeah. You understand? And so now you can begin to walk in a newness, newness of, life. of life. You can become now you are you're able to have fellowship with God. And that's something that's very, very important. So walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Right? We're not going to stay. With, that sin can't hold us down. That grave couldn't hold Jesus down. Right? We had we had to, got the power over that. Right? And that's what happens when you get baptized and you go through this. What can I? What must I do to be saved? When you go through all these steps, that sin will have no power over you. So likeness of his resurrection, verse six, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, with who? With Jesus. That old man is crucified with Jesus, right? That old man is done away with. That old man is dead. That, that old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Amen. Now I want to take this opportunity uh, that to means you're free. Actually, it means you know you're <laughs> free. You you you're free from sinning. You do not have to sin anymore. Now the ideal is you are baptized with a man of God, a preacher, a bishop, 
that canal lead you on into perfection. And I say perfection because, yes, perfection is required with God. Amen. So, um, you know, it's, it's a crucial, once you are baptized, to make certain that you have that church that you can go to and stay in and go to the services and forsake not yourself uh, assembling into the church so that, you know, you can get stronger and stronger and stronger and led into Jesus Christ uh, so that you have that righteousness that is required to make heaven and be saved from eternal damnation. I want to take this opportunity to, if you're not a subscribe member to our channel, for you to subscribe to our channel. Yes. Our channel is Ultimate Health, Mind and Body Recreative Ministries. Um, you'll see uh, we have sermons, many sermons on our channel. Over 150 sermons are on the channel. Uh, to, and everyone will help you. They're guaranteed to help you through life. There's something on there. And no matter what situation that you have, Bishop has preached and there is something on there. For whatever situation you have, we have a sermon for that to help you through life. We also have praise and worship videos on there, songs of praise to where it keeps your mind consecrated and keep you uplifted and uplifted with the, mm. the Spirit of God in Amen. you. We And we have uh, our Bible studies are on our channel. So we encourage you to uh, subscribe if you're not a subscribe member and and we encourage yes, you to encourage others yes. so they can be helped yes. to encourage others so you may not know what to tell somebody how to be saved you may not be that bold to tell somebody how to be saved but you can direct them to the channel where they can hear how to be exactly. saved exactly we're 135 Spruce Street Fairmont West Virginia 26554 if you can come and join with us we'd be happy to have you and we have live interaction with questions during the Bible studies every Wednesday. Uh, and so if you put a question up, we will answer. Uh, if you have a comment, we can answer back live, right back with you. Uh, we're interacting lively with you. And we are guaranteed that if you leave a comment, you're guaranteed that we will get back in touch with you. Uh, we even have the phone number on there if you go on the site ultimate health mind and body recreative ministry recreative uh you know that we have a phone number we will get back with you and we will um, talk with you we will um, text you whatever is necessary we <coughs> will we guarantee ourselves to you amen and uh and saying that this is part two that we just got finished doing uh, we did part one. If you didn't, if you did not catch part one, go back, go to the channel, and uh, watch part one. Repent. What must I do to be saved? Repent. And part be one. Baptized. Be baptized. Amen. Part two. Amen. Repent. One. And be baptized. Two. Exactly. And part three. Lord willing, we will have that for you next Wednesday. Amen. And now, in saying this. We uh, may God bless you. We want God to bless you. May God bless you as you do his will.